Hey, Shannon, Jim here, coming at you with another edition of Shadow Espresso. And today, we're going to talk about lessons learned from the case study that I've been running over the last couple of weeks, actually probably about a month now, um, and wanted to focus in on the big takeaways, the big lessons that I've learned from this little case study, and how I'm going to apply them going forward into Q1 for Valentine's Day uh, and beyond. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive in. So this is, we did, uh, and I will dive into all the data that I saw, all the, the lessons that I learned from it uh, at the end of this guide. Um, but in the beginning, I want to focus on really the big lessons. So this was transplanting seeds to our seedling stage. Now, um, I saw really high CPMs during this test. So high that normally I probably would have stopped running it right then and tried uh, to fix it without running actual conversion ads. Um, on average, CPMs should run anywhere from, I've seen them as cheap as $10 on Facebook still, uh, from $10 anywhere to $30. But anything above $30, things really kind of get dicey. Uh, and unless you have a ton of margin uh, and really high click-through rates, it's really going to eat in your ability to scale and find a true winner. So even though we had high CPMs, I wanted to see what could happen. Uh, I figured that it was high because of when I launched the ads. Now, if, if you uh, recall that this case study literally started on, Valentine, or on Thanksgiving Day uh, and ran uh, in the initial stages from Black Friday through Cyber Monday. In retrospect, that's its own lesson. Don't do that. Don't start brand new things uh, during Black Friday, Cyber Monday. That's probably the worst time of the year uh, to start something brand new. Um, so biggest uh, first lesson that I learned that I wanted to focus on was I adapted a message card to be very holiday specific. So I took an old winning phrase that we had uh, and I adapted the background design to it and I threw in a Christmassy uh, flair to it. So this is a double-edged sword. If you do this at the beginning of a holiday season for Q4, I believe that that could help. Um, if, it, if for no other reason, it, it could not hinder things. However, uh, you do limit your buying cycle that you can do. So for example, we're now past our shipping deadline for Christmas. That product is now null and void. I can't run it again until next Q4. So being that it was a brand new product and I started it super late in, in November, uh, it was not a good idea on my behalf to choose a holiday specific message only because now that that data that I've purchased up until this point either has to sit dormant, which is basically worthless until next Q4, or now I have to hope that if I develop an evergreen message um, around the same niche, so father to daughter, uh, then hopefully the data that's collected on the, on the pixel will transfer. Uh, to that new message, which is guaranteed, no. Uh, so it's a little bit higher risk there. So if I was to do this over again, I would focus on, an, uh, on a message uh, on the card itself to be more broad-based, not uh, holiday-specific. That doesn't mean that I wouldn't still try and change up my ad creatives or my product descriptions to focus in on the actual event or the holiday I'm trying to sell. I think that would help too. What I'm getting at is if you're going to adapt your ad strategy to be holiday specific, whether it's Christmas time like it is right now or Valentine's Day or Mother's Day or wedding or, or what have you, whatever big time of the year you're focusing on, um, you would want to keep the message card itself, the phrase on the message card and the background design on the message card neutral not event specific, people specific, yes. Like calling out to my daughter or calling out to my uh, smoking hot wife, you know, that is very appropriate. Getting so niche to that holiday is probably not the right choice. Instead, what I would do is do a generic or more broad-based message on the card and then say perfect gift for holiday as a call out in the ad or on the primary text or, um, in the somewhere in the ad creative itself. That way, even though the ads themselves die when the holiday is over with or the shipping deadline for the holiday, holiday is up, I can just create a, a variation of that winning ad and then remove that or change it over to some other call out for the next one. So if you're trying to do, let's say you're working in the wife niche and you had a wife one working for Christmas time 
and it's a broad um, message, so it's not calling out Christmas or holidays or anything like that in the message, and then what you can do is you can adapt your creative to go into Valentine's Day. So the message is still the same, the product is still the same, all the optimization on the pixel is still the same. All I'm doing is changing the front end ad to be more relevant to that buying season. So that's a big lesson uh, that I took away from this particular thing. Uh, and that's what that goes into there. Um, my application from that lesson is, uh, so for my next product testing in Q1, I'll be creating messages for wife or soulmate or future wife and mommy to be. Uh, but I will not be telling the message to Valentine's Day. I will, however, be adding little call outs or emojis or, or little bits and bops um, that add and sort of um, gear my, my ad messaging towards Valentine's Day, but not the product itself. Okay. Lesson two, I will not start so late in the buying season to try and get a winner. Uh, that is really, I think, was the largest contributing factor to why this test didn't work out very well and definitely why we ended up with such high CPMs. Uh, I think the algorithm said, or, this is a brand new anything and I haven't looked at it at all and I don't have time to give it its fair shake, so it's just gonna get really expensive traffic. Um, it was brand new everything, brand new store, pixel ad account, everything. Uh, so if I was going to do that again on a brand new everything, I would start way earlier in the buying season um, so that I had time to give Facebook that seed data before I started to scale. Uh, for example, uh, to, or to apply that same lesson into going forward, uh, I'm planning on doing our quarter one ads um, that I'll be running and testing. I'm starting those the week after Christmas. That way I know that people aren't expecting it for Christmas because Christmas has already passed. Uh, and I can attach my ad messaging and product description messaging to, to focus in on Valentine's Day since that's our next big peak season, if you will. Um, and that's what I talk about there. Uh, let's see, big lesson takeaway three. Seed stages may not provide true actionable data. So as a proper data scientist, and that's kind of what we are as media buyers, if you look at yourself as a data scientist, you have to be open to saying you're wrong whether it's methodology or your structure and ads or the type of products you're doing or the angle, the marketing angles you're creating, you have to be humble enough to say, maybe I'm wrong. So that's this particular takeaway uh, is I now have that question, maybe testing at $5 for what I want to accomplish volume wise and scaling wise, maybe $5 testing is not the right way for me to test. Now, I have a much different goal potentially than you do. I don't know what your particular, your particular goals are and I definitely don't know what your financial resources are. We have a lot of financial resources. That is one clear advantage that we have over an average seller, okay? Um, if you have a small budget, that doesn't mean you can't win at this. You absolutely can. You may not be trying to scale to $2 million you know, in an annual sales or a quarterly sales goal or whatever. You know, your goal may be, I want to make, I, that, my very first goal when I got into e-commerce back in like 2010, eight, something like that, eight or 10. My first, no, it was 2008. My first goal was to make $100 a day in profit. Remember guys, girls too. This game is not about revenue numbers. Revenue numbers are cool and they sell courses and they get you comma club awards and all that jazz. But what's important is how much money you take home. That's what really matters. So if you can figure out how you make whatever your goal is, this is $100 a day, that's an extra $3,000 a month. Back then for me, uh, I was making $40,000 a year. So if I made an extra $100 a day, that's an extra $36,500 a year. That almost doubles my salary. That was astronomically important to me back then. That may be astronomically importantly to you right now, and that's okay, all right? So you have to figure out what is my goal profit-wise? How much money do I actually wanna make from this in what amount of time? And that will determine how you test and how you scale. If your goal is to make $100 a day in profit, you don't need to, to go from $5 ads to $80 ads to $1,000 ads. You don't, you don't need that. You need good profit margin and you need to slowly grow it to where you can get to that, 
okay? $100 a day in gross profit or a net profit after ad spend and COGS, you should be targeting about $1,000 a day in revenue. So if your target is $1,000 a day in revenue, you don't need to just go from $80 and spend up to a $1,000 campaign and say, okay, well, this is what Jim does to scale. You have to relate that back to you, right? So if, if your goal is to make $1,000 a day in revenue, to make $100 a day in profit, then you should be shooting to spend $500 a day total. And you should figure out how best to spend that $500 a day. How many seeds is that or tests? How many mid-level scales is that? And then what does your final scale look like? Notice how $500 a day total in ad spend doesn't get anywhere near a $1,000 campaign. So you have to figure out your numbers. Keep it very simple. I wanna make $300 a day in profit. Multiply your profit by 10 that gives you revenue that you need to make per day. If you're making 10% uh, in this current ad market where we are, competitive level, iOS 14, tracking issues, all that stuff, a realistic profit goal is 10% off of the revenue that you generate. Should you make more? Yes, you should. Uh, will you make more? Probably especially at the levels that most of you will probably be playing at, and that's okay. Bare minimum, you should be trying to make 10% on the revenue that you make, okay? So if you are 3,000, if I wanna make $300 a day, times 10 gives me $3,000, I have to shoot for $3,000 in revenue, okay? To get at least 10%, you should be looking to make two times the amount of ad spend that you're spending. For revenue so if you got to figure out okay I want $300 a day in profit which means I need 10 times the amount of revenue so that's $3,000 in revenue a day okay so I have $3,000 revenue a day and he told me I need to be shooting for spending half of my ad half of my revenue should be roughly ad spend to get that metric so that means you should be targeting $1,500 a day in ad spend that's realistic numbers, okay? My numbers are, um, my directive is literally make as much money as humanly possible, spend as much money as you need to to make it. Not many of us, including me as when I was, well, I mean, when I got, when I got going, I had that same directive for me as uh, an independent seller. Probably not the best way to run a shop, to be honest with you. Because if you're fast and loose like that, make as much money as possible, I don't care how much it takes, you're more apt to have bigger losses, okay? Bigger day losses, intraday losses, things like that. Um, keep tight controls, especially if you're just starting out. Go through that financial process I just went through. What do you want for this? How much profit do you want a day? Multiply that number by 10 to get revenue. Divide by that revenue number by two. That will give you how much you should be shooting to spend. And if you can't afford to spend that much money on a day, then you know you got to work your way up to it. I didn't start with unending amounts of money to, to run ads. I started with, I had a credit card with $10,000 on a credit limit. And I told myself that I was either going to make this work or I was going bankrupt. No joke. I had that conversation with myself three times before I started. I had a $10,000 limit on my credit card. I was going to spend $10,000 or more and if for some reason I couldn't pay it off, I would end up filing bankruptcy because I knew that that's the level of commitment it would take to be able to make a success. Thankfully, I didn't have to get all the way there. Thankfully, I didn't have to run up my credit card all the way to $10,000 without being able to pay it off. And it worked out. It may not for you. And I can't promise that it will. All right. I can give you the tools that I use and the skills that we use. Ultimately, success is determined by you. Level of effort is determined by you. Luck, also determined by you. Okay? All right, so sorry I got on my soapbox there for a little bit, but that's a, a handy little tip to say, um, my lesson on this is perhaps $5 is not enough for me to get actionable data to scale as quickly as I want to. 
I may have to adapt my strategy to spending $150 uh, in a CBO test across five ad sets um, with a, a, making them have a minimum spend or something. I may have to adapt my testing strategy. Now, as I run this, so when I start my Q1 test going up uh, the week after Christmas, I will be running them as this way. This is what worked for me in the past. I'm going to run it this way and see if a second round of it is, can I take a seed at $5 and it shows that it's successful and then make that successful at a higher uh, ad budget. If I can, this strategy holds. We will continue to teach this strategy. If it doesn't, then I will adapt what works or when I figure out how to make it work on a testing for us, I will tell you what we do, okay? Take what we say with a grain of salt. What works for us, works for us based off of our risk tolerances, our budget levels, and our financial goals. You have to figure out as a business owner how to apply those three things and how they fit into your business model. If you don't have a business plan for 2022 yet and you're taking this seriously, when this video ends, your homework is to create a business plan for 2022. And it doesn't have to be anything fancy. How much money do I wanna make? And if you can't answer that in a year's turn, boil it down to one day. I wanna make $100 a day, okay? That means you need to spend $500 a day in ads. Well, Jim, I can't afford $500 a day in ads. Okay, how much can you afford? If you can't afford and you don't have any credit lines to tap into and you don't have a lot of budget to go into, you're gonna have to be able to be okay at staying in the seed stage until you bank enough money to be able to afford to scale. I can't answer that question for you. Only you can do that. Now, if you've got five, ten thousand dollars in a credit line or and sitting in the bank and I'm gonna give a real go at this and I wanna scale up super fast, fine. A big bankroll is not the only factor that comes into winning or losing in this game. It's just if you have a smaller bankroll to start, you are not going to scale as fast as those that do. That's just the reality of it, okay? So as I learn stuff, as I figure stuff out that works for us, I will tell you what works for us and it's your job to figure out how to apply it at your budget level. Is that fair? I think that's fair. All right, so let's dive. Those were the three big takeaways from this case study at this point. And unfortunately, I have to kill the case study because it's no longer Christmas season. Um, so assuming I get through uh, my tests that I want and we actually get some learnable data, I'll be sharing that learn learning data, okay? Uh, it's not like this is the last time you're going to see us in the last uh, walkthrough that we go through. All right. So uh, bear with us as we continue to, to shift over and move. And as we learn, we'll teach it or we'll share. Uh, for this seedling test, I took the best performing audiences and moved them into three separate ad sets. I did this as three separate ad sets based off of the ad type because I wanted to test ad type with uh, the audience itself. So I did three different types of ads in its own ad set. One ad set contained a dynamic ad duplicate, which we talked about in the last shot of espresso that I did. It was a dynamic ad and I talked you through that. I also took the best combination of image only ad and I ran it and then I did just the video one because if you recall in the last uh, shot of espresso, I found out that Facebook actually gave us no traffic to the video ad. So I wanted to see why that was and could we make it work. So I chose to do this as a fit up. Oh, there we go. Uh, so this is what the image ad looked like. And it was the primary text she was so hard to buy for until now. I'm not crying, you're crying. Uh, she was so hard to buy for until now. So you can see that's the same. Um, going back through the data uh, dump that we did in the last one, um, for some reason I had seen that this was actually a primary text and it got a lot of click-through rates as the headline. And I think Facebook just messed up the reporting of the data uh, because these ads did not work very well. Um, realistically, this should have been one of the uh, get 39% off or click now, um, claim 39% off or whatever the, the, the discount was. Uh, and then this uh, was a true statement as far as primary text go. 
Um, so either call that out or call the specific recipient out or this is the perfect gift for your daughter, blah, blah, blah. Something along those lines to call it out. What you don't want, um, what we found worked best for us in Q4 was not having a super developed primary text because that took away from the focus on the message card itself. So let's look at the data. Uh, this was our CPMs. As you can see, on average, the CPMs in the seedling stage were $44.63. And remember, I said anything above 30 bucks, it's really hard to get profitable. And if you can see our image only ad was at $76.59, and our video only ad was $63.92. So that is something I want to test into this new year as well is does dynamic ads yield lower CPMs on average versus an isolated video and image counterpart? So let me restate that to make sure that you guys follow me. Remember I ran a dynamic, video, a dynamic ad with multiple images and multiple primary text and across the board, if you look at this sheet, the cheaper CPMs were all those dynamic ads. The more expensive ads were when it was isolated. So this is an image ad, this is a, a video ad, and then this is the video ad again. Those were the highest CPMs. So it'll be interesting to see going forward, is that the same thing? And if that's the case, fine, we'll run dynamic ads, right? So even if you have one image, just and to make it dynamic, just add two primary texts or two headlines, right? And run it that way. Um, so how do you fix the CPM issue? One, it could be time of year that you start, just like we talked about. Ads were started on Thanksgiving Day and ran through Black Friday, Cyber Monday. Not the best time of year to start stuff. So starting your ads uh, during that particular really super competitive time frame probably had a lot to do with the skew of the cost. In addition, uh, you would also want to run landing page view ads um, under the conversion campaign, so conversion optimized. But instead of optimized for conversions, you're optimizing towards landing page views. This obviously is going to this is going to go to the same ads that you're running on this. All right, so you're not going to generate a bunch of landing page views on its own standalone ad copy. You want it to to get landing page views on the same ads, uh, but only 10% of your budget. That will help lower your CPMs. I also started a page like campaign to grow uh, our number of likes on our page because I'm trying to develop it as a real brand. So this is not just um, a funnel or a product funnel. Uh, it is not just a Shopify store. I'm trying to develop as a real brand. I want Facebook to believe that my page is real and I'm really gonna have people on it and I wanna add content to it and give uh, attention to it and really grow it like a real company would um, because that will gain favor in the ad auctions uh, in subsequent ad auctions. Now, uh, I posted several organic posts on the page to help with that. I also lower the budgets from these initial budgets for the initial time period was $150 instead of what I would, in previous uh, in a previous, when I talked about farming method, I did between 50 and 80. Because this was Q4 and I was trying to scale faster than I probably should have, uh, I bumped them to 150. And realistically, uh, in retrospect on a brand new pixel, a brand new everything with not a lot of pixel data on it, uh, probably too aggressive of a scale. So going from $5 to $150 the next day, uh, probably not the best choice um, there, but I was impatient and I wanted to see if we could scale hard because it was Q4. Uh, okay, so going into here, you can see our purchase ROAS. Things did not really go well from a track standpoint uh, in Facebook, but the importance of UTM tracking, this is our report here in our Shopify store, you can see if you compare once you download this guide that um, Facebook got it wrong in a lot of cases. Like the WWE one had six sales and WWE they only had four. So that went from under uh, break even, so losing, to above break even. And you add cogs in, now I'm at a break even, right? So it's important to know where your sales are actually coming from. So Christmas 150. Uh, Christmas 150, it had three track sales. Again, Facebook missed two of them. So this is closer to break even, right? So it's important to have your UTM tags on there because Facebook does get it wrong all the time. All right. Um, so however, prior to turning anything off, you do need to, I just did that. So you need to, pro, you need to compare those two. 
Now, um, I did pivot and I went to lower budgets, to $80 budgets, and I focused on our best performing ad sets. And this is a Hyros screenshot, so we do use Hyros, but you can see this is a 1.96 ROAS versus 1.04, and, and this is about just under break even. So I was letting both of these run. This profit was balancing out this mini loss, and this was giving me a lot of, a, a decent number, a consistent number of pixel fires. Okay, so realistically, I let these run longer than I normally would have uh, because I am trying to season the pixel to at least 100 purchases uh, in this niche. And then that way I can, you know, feel more confident in being able to scale like normal into um, the, the next father to daughter brace or necklace that we do. Okay, so final thoughts. What will we do? I'm going to stop all those ads. I did. All the ads are start. I'm going to create a, a new evergreen phrase. Uh, leveraging uh, so from so I'll take the dad to daughter niche I'll create a new phrase uh, within our best practices so that's either a dark background with white or light text or white background with black text um, and I will run very simple design it won't be a lot of frills or, or things like that uh, it'll be very message focused um, now this is going to be more of an evergreen campaign. I'm not going to pitch it as a Valentine's Day specifically for father to daughter. I want to create it as an evergreen campaign uh, in the hopes that we get some traction on it and I can kind of slow grow it throughout the year and then really getting it ready for uh, Q4. So if I can keep this break even <coughs> and hopefully a little bit profitable, I'll just keep it low volume over the entire year, and then as we get into Q4 again, then it should allow me to scale quite heavy. Now you're like, Jim, that's only one product. Are you telling me you're only gonna run one product for the whole year? No, uh, but this may be, you know, if I can get something to pop off profitably here um, and then keep it throughout the whole year, sure, I'll do that. And then I'll just add more stuff onto it then, then onto the other niches. You know, my goal uh, for this, this store in particular is to have one product profitable per niche so that when we get to Q4 next year, then we'll really have some serious volume. Okay. So you're looking at the money making niches. There's what, five to 10 of them. So if we had five to 10 products already primed with their pixels ready to go, uh, a ton of off, uh, a ton of sales on all of them and it's been super CRO'd throughout the year and we already have all of our upsells dialed in and all of that, and then all we have to do is wait for the big buying season, perfect. you know. And that's not to discount the spikes throughout the year. Um, more than likely, a, a single product, if it's an evergreen product like I hope it will be, uh, will usually have two to three spikes in a year. Okay, so you'll get You'll break even, make a little money, make a little money, and then all of a sudden the algorithm will whee, and you make a bunch of money and then it collapses. And then you create new ad creatives instead of starting from scratch with a brand new product. And then you go, okay, and then you keep humming along and doing that. Now, does this also mean that I've got, so if I've only got, uh, I've got something working for the father to daughter niche, uh, I shouldn't keep testing new father to daughter phrases. No, you should absolutely be testing them because what's the worst that happens? You have two or three father to daughter products. Okay. You know, I mean, that's more the merrier, right? Um, so there's a lot to go into uh, for 2022. It's, it's, I'm incredibly excited for it based off of all the knowledge that we've gained uh, this year. And as we learn more stuff, as we refine our strategies, as we um, continue to navigate this post iOS world, we will continue to be there for you. We will continue to give you the best piece of advice we possibly can. Um, as we wrap up, this is my last shot of espresso for the year. I want to thank you for your time and your energy uh, and your dedication and all the kudos that you guys give us. Um, we wouldn't be here without you, so we thank you very much for your continued support. As far as biggest takeaways is focus on one niche at a time. Put most of your effort into the phrase. Make sure it looks good on the message card while the necklace is laid on it, okay? Don't give up. Understand this is hard. If this were easy, everyone would do it. Be the outlier. Don't give up.
you will get there. You will get there faster than you believe. More people give up on this thing two inches from success, and it's sad to see. And I don't want to be, I do not want that to be you. All right, cool. So that, my friends, is shot of espresso for this seedling stage. Do I wish that we had a giant winner and I could say, oh, look how easy your thing is? That's not reality. Reality is, is um, had I done a better job, I would have not run a Christmas themed phrase or I would have done the Christmas themed phrase back in October. Okay, because that's when you should really start testing this stuff. If you don't run a Christmas themed thing or a holiday themed thing, I could have then said, okay, so we've got all this base data and we've learned all these things. Now let's apply these lessons to this and we can continue on. Realistically, I kind of have to start over from square one because now I have to develop a new phrase uh, and a new design. So that's going to be my next steps with this niche. Uh, and so you've got to take the lessons that you can learn from whatever you did this quarter or this year and figure out how you apply them for next year. The lessons learned, how do I avoid doing them again? Um, what can I implement to make sure that my process is better or my phrases are more in, on point? Uh, how do I take the learnings from shots of espresso uh, and adapt my structure of ads and budget of ads to what fits me? All right, that's a big key. You don't, it's not just here's a recipe, follow the recipe, and it's going to come out the same every time. It's not. Your account's different than mine. Your budget's different than mine. Your risk tolerance is different than mine. Don't give up. Keep spending. Keep testing because that's how you gain experience. Watching these things are great. gives you great background knowledge. It does. It, it will shorten your learning curve. But the best teacher is experience. And that's terrible to say. I wish I could say, uh, keep watching these and you'll be a millionaire next year. I wish I could say that. And it might happen for you. But the, the credit's going to go to you, not to me. All right. So I'm going to stop rambling on. Uh, I can't thank you guys enough for paying attention for these shots of espresso. I hope you learned stuff. As always, if you have questions, please tag me in the comments below. Otherwise, I will not see them. Until next time, have a very, very happy new year and see you in 22.